Welcome to the Daily Update Snapshot Edition, where I'll briefly go over the action in the market for Monday, April 25th, and then see how things look for Tuesday, April 26th. And when I recorded the full-length daily video, there's some construction going on near where I'm recording. I can't really control that. I don't know when it's going to start or stop. Right now, as I record this, there's no noise going on, but if you hear some drilling sound in the background, that's what's happening, and I wish I could do something about that, but I just can't. So let's go back and talk about what happened on Monday. We did see a bit of a bounce. Thursday and Friday were big down days last week. A lot of our short-term indicators had become oversold. Even a few of our intermediate-term indicators that were showing us that we had fallen too far too fast. So it didn't look like it was going to start off very good. We gapped lower right at the open, and selling quickly then took prices down to S1, which was at 42.31, right around that level. Then, as the day went on, we saw prices bounce and actually got above and then below S1. We danced right around S1 for most of the day. Buyers then entered and took prices back positive. So we ended up looking at least a little bit better instead of this constant selling that's been going on. There was some late day buying as we got into the close. We closed almost at the high, but each day there's a thing called the daily pivot, which is calculated on the chart. We did have an update, but we were still below the daily pivot. Usually above the daily pivot, that's considered positive. Below the daily pivot is negative, but we still had an up day nonetheless. We ended up being up 0.57% on above average volume. We haven't seen that in a while. The technicals are still pretty much negative across the board. Some of our short-term oversold readings are getting worn off a little bit, but we're still negative when you look at everything all together. Inflation and interest rates continue to be the real fixation. All the different geopolitical concerns and then earnings reports, which can have a positive or negative impact, as well as any Fed speak that may be coming in or out of the news cycle. So what are some comments? Earlier in the day, in the overnight session, China and Asia, and yes, I know China is in Asia, but from a stock market perspective, China is its own separate thing. There'll probably come a time when we pay closer attention to China 10, 15 years ago, I didn't even know China had a stock market. And so I never really watched it all that close. Now I look at it, but it doesn't have a big impact on the U.S. stock market. And then Asia, that includes Japan, Singapore, the Hang Seng Index, Hong Kong. Those areas are more what I'm talking about with Asia. They were down pretty strong. And then Europe also ended up being pretty negative. There was some election results over the weekend that the market took as more negative and plus all the other things that are in the air these days. So that then fed over into the U.S. session. We looked like we were just going to pick up where we left off on Friday, and we did for the first part of the day. As I mentioned earlier, we did find some buying, and so by the end of the day, there was a slight recovery from that short-term oversold condition. Now, Big question is, can we continue? Or is this just a dead cat bounce before we get set to go even lower? Oil did go back under 100. I know there's a typo there. The technicals are negative when you take them pretty much in every time frame right now. We're still in correction territory with the S&P 500. The 10 to 5 yield curve is still inverted. So our idea that after we see the yield curves go back to normal, we often see a big thrust up in stock prices. I'm leaving that off the table right now until all of the yield curves go back to looking normal. And even then, it can take some time. It doesn't mean the minute they go back to looking good that we shoot up right from there. Other things need to fall into place for that to happen, and none of those things have come about yet. And then the big story over the weekend is that Elon Musk at least to this point, has made a successful bid at taking over Twitter. He announced it a week or so ago, and then he formally made an announcement, and so now we'll just have to see where things go from here. There weren't any economic reports that came out over the weekend. 
um, I'm sorry, over the over Monday's session, the uh, trend condition is negative, and it's a new developing trend, depending on how you use the ADX indicator. The lines have crossed. That's if you're a little bit more aggressive. If you are more conservative, you want to wait to see the ADX come back above 20, and that has not happened yet. So the trend is negative. Our bias, I switched over from mixed because we had a slight update, but it's still kind of negative overall. And our momentum continues to be negative. One thing that I want to show you, since we're getting closer to the Fed meeting, is we're looking at what are the probabilities of where interest rates are going to be after the meeting. And on May 4th, the market right now is predicting a 97.6% probability that we'll, we will be at three quarters of a percent to a full percent. We're at 25 to 50 now. So that means it would be a 50 basis point or half a percent move up in interest rates. Then looking at the June 15th meeting, there's an 89.3% chance that after that meeting, they're going to bump it 50 basis points again or another half a percent. And we'll be at one and a half to 175. And then at the July meeting, there's an 88% chance that will be at 2% to 2 and a quarter percent. So that's a big move. 2% in seven months, possibly. Now these change all the time. And economic reports and different events change this. But as we're getting closer to these meetings, that's why I'm starting to show these charts more often. Looking at the daily chart, we did get back above the intermediate term support. This line has been on this chart for quite a while and goes all the way back to a low that was set last fall. We had broken just slightly below it and it looked like, boy, we were just going to keep going. But when the buying came in, that took us back above this support level and we currently have regained that bit of ground, at least to this point. Then here's our trend where you can see the, the dark black line, that's the ADX. And then I have a moving average on here as well. We have crossed over. So if you're more aggressive, you probably might look at doing some kind of trend-based strategy. With the red line on top, that means the trend is negative. If you're more conservative, you want to wait until these numbers or this line comes back above 20. It just depends on how you use this indicator. And again, I have other videos on YouTube. I have a, an article on my blog that I go into more detail where I talk about the different ways you can use the ADX. We're below all of the moving averages right now with our moving average spaghetti tree right now. And we're also below the moving average rainbow. We've got a lot of making up to do just to get back above any of these moving averages. And these are all longer term moving averages too. We're negative on a long term basis because we continue to be below the 200 day simple moving average. The dollar still continues to do well. It was up 0.55% and is getting close to 102. We closed at 101.77. Oil saw a bit of a decline. We were down underneath 100 to 98.54. And then this is the yield curve that is still inverted. It's the 10 to the 5, and it is at point, minus 0 0.03 right now. Then I also want to point out that that pretty strong inverse relationship between tech and interest rates, we're kind of starting to lose that. As this is going back up, that means the relationship is less and less likely between the two. Now, it could always change, and we could see a more direct relationship, but for the last few trading sessions, this isn't as powerful as it has been, or at least was last week. So what's our outlook then for Tuesday? The technicals are negative. Can this short-term bounce continue? That's the big question. The markets still remain in a trendless intermediate term range and it'll stay trendless until something significant happens. We still have the battle between growth and value. We have supply chain issues. I guess they're cracking down a lot more in China about the lockdowns. That could affect their economy, which could also affect our economy because we buy so much from them. The economic reports coming out on Tuesday are consumer confidence, and that can move the markets. New home sales and possibly move the markets. Durable goods, which sometimes has an impact. 
the housing price index and the Case-Shiller home price index. Those are real estate related. That'll be coming out on Tuesday. And then all the different geopolitical events, Russia, Ukraine, the supply chain that I've talked about, inflation, interest rates, oil, earnings that are coming out, any kind of Fed speak. If they're giving a speech or doing an interview, the markets just fixate on that. And so far it's been negative, but you never know. Somebody could come out and say free money for everybody, no interest rates ever again. And they're a voting member on the FOMC and the market just has a party. But don't expect anything like that to happen. So what are our scenarios? If you're more conservative with the ADX, you are working with scenario number three right now. It's below 20. It's starting to climb. It is showing a negative trend. And when we're in this kind of an environment, we see a real slowdown in price movement and real choppy action, especially on our daily charts. If you are more aggressive with the ADX, you might already be assuming that we're in a downtrend. And what will keep that downtrend going? Rising interest rates have had a big influence. Inflation fears, some of these reports coming out might have an influence. Earnings that are coming out, Fed speak, all anything that's taken as negative can really shoot things lower. Now, also be reminded that these things could also take things higher. Like I was just saying, some really strong earnings report, some really dovish speech from the Fed, that could really help bounce prices higher. Then the scenario that's least likely right now, but still is a possibility, is going up from here, the short term and intermediate term. We're still oversold to a degree. We're coming off of a short term and slightly intermediate term oversold condition. And then this, I don't have any charts to show this, and I don't have any charts in the full length video either, but I'm seeing a few indicators that sometimes give us pretty good long term bottom signals, but they're just developing right now. And this can take days, if not weeks, for these to actually come together. I just want to include this as part of the scenario to know that this downtrend that we're seeing, some indicators that pick up a bottom, they're, they're not registering anything yet, but they're going in that direction. Uh, the positive backdrop after the yield curve inverts, that that's, isn't on the table because we still have the 10 to the 5 that's inverted. Now, if you're more aggressive with this and you're like, screw the 10 to the 5, I'm at the 10 to the 2 or the 10 to the 3 month or whatever you use, you might still be looking for this spike that can come after we have an inversion of the yield curve. I'm taking it a little bit more conservative myself. And then the spike in staples, well, they just keep spiking. So we don't know if they've topped out yet. Sometimes when that happens, when they spike and then go back down, that can produce a real upthrust in the price of stocks. And then our technicals. Moving averages and pivots may provide some kind of support or resistance. We're kind of through the whole moving average universe right now. It would have to be more of a support level provided by a pivot or a previous low or something like that, either in the S&P or in another index. So our conclusion then is that the S&P is negative. Short term, it's negative, but in it. We can't say it could be bouncing because it did bounce. The question should be, could, can it continue? Intermediate term, we're still negative. Our oscillators are negative and we're below a lot of pretty important, in fact, all moving averages. Long term, we're also switching over to negative because we remain below the 200-day simple moving average. Here's just a list. If you want a more in-depth discussion of what I go through and all the charts that I use, please look at the full length version of the daily video update. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful Tuesday. I'll prepare the next snapshot edition after Tuesday's session.